We are going through a uh, little tedious, but uh, so far not very difficult treatment of uh, trying to find an analytic solution for Schrodinger equation of a harmonic oscillator by using the power series method. This is where we had stopped in the last module. Just to do a quick recap, what we are doing is we are proposing the solution of H xi, please do not forget where H xi comes from or where xi comes from. Xi is simply root over m omega by H cross multiplied by x. The wave function is H which is a function of omega uh, sorry function of xi multiplied by e to the power minus xi square by 2. Now what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out what this H of xi is. If you remember for very large values of xi it is a constant. But for all values of xi, what is the general expression? To know that we have expressed this as a power series h of xi is sum over j equal to 0 to infinity a j xi to the power j. Right? And then uh, what we have done is we have uh, written this recursion formula a j plus 2 in terms of a j. And there we have put in j minus v. Hence, we have proved that uh, j max is equal to v. You cannot have a j value. What is j value? j is the uh, number of terms in uh, the summation for uh, h of xi. So, in the most general form, it is an infinite sum. So, what we are saying is actually it is a finite sum. You do not need to go beyond uh, the vth term. So, which means uh, suppose v equal to 0, then 0th term is enough. 0th term does not mean no term, 0th term means uh, for j equal to 0, what will it be? Uh, xi to the power j will be 0, uh, xi, xi to the power j will be 1 and you will be left with a0. Okay? Suppose uh, your v equal to 5, that means you have to sum from j equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that is enough. You do not have to go to j equal to 5,32,097. Okay? That is what is the meaning of j max equal to v. Then we said that now the thing is this, this recursion formulae connect uh, alternate amplitudes. So, depending on whether j is even or odd, all amplitudes for odd or even terms respectively are going to be 0 because you will not be able to access them. Okay? That is what we say uh, in this line. Right? So, what we have been able to do is we have been able to write uh, instead of 1, 2 separate series and this time uh, terminated series for uh, the function h of xi. For odd values of v, h of xi is equal to a1 multiplied by xi plus a3 multiplied by xi cube plus a5 multiplied by xi to the power 5, so on and so forth. The last term is a v multiplied by xi to the power v. For even values of v, we have h of xi equal to a0 plus a2 multiplied by xi square plus a4 multiplied by xi to the power 4, so on and so forth. Last term once again is a v multiplied by xi to the power 5 v. So, we have two series two kinds of wave functions, two kinds of functions, for one for odd, one for even. And now, as I said earlier, uh, even when the uh, harmonic oscillator problem was being worked out using quantum mechanics for the first time, the mathematics was already developed uh, for this kind of differential equations. Right? That is how science progresses. You do things uh, perhaps without even thinking that there can be an application. You do it because it is there. And then applications uh, often come out eventually. So, uh, it was known 
that this kind of polynomials are actually what are called Hermite polynomials. So, I will show you some examples of Hermite polynomials. These are the Hermite polynomials HV for V equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, you see what you have for V equal to 0 the polynomial is just 1 for <coughs> these are normalized Hermite polynomials. For V equal to 1 it is 2 xi. For V equal to 2 note you have something in xi to the power 0 and something in xi to the power 2. For V equal to 3 there is no xi to the power 0 term you have minus 12 xi plus 8 xi cube that xi square and xi to the power 0 are missing. Similarly for V equal to 4 you have xi to the power 4, xi to the power 2, xi to the power 0 and it goes on. Okay. So, these are the Hermite polynomials. Uh, how do you find the wave function? By multiplying each Hermite polynomial by this common exponent well a common Gaussian function e to the power minus xi square by 2. Using Hermite polynomials has it advantages. In fact, at even if you cannot uh, prove it ab initio, what you can do is uh, you can at least verify what I am going to write now. It was known already that these Hermite polynomials have this relations with each other. We have already discussed one kind of recursion relation. Here we have something that is related. This is what it is. Uh, I have written it in a little different form than that of the group that, that of the book. I have written 2 xi multiplied by hv of xi is the sum of the polynomial after hv plus of in xi plus some constant well this should be 2v I am sorry this should not be n it should be v 2v multiplied by v minus 1th Hermite polynomial in xi. What does this mean? Let us take uh, anything. Let us take uh, xi 3. Multiply xi 3 by xi. What do you get? You get a term in xi to the power 4. You get another term in xi square. Now, look at the polynomial after. You have something in xi to the power 4, something in xi square and you have a constant. Look at the polynomial be, uh, before. It is 4 xi square minus 2. So, what I am saying is that once you multiply any polynomial by xi, what you get is a linear combination of the polynomial before and polynomial after. It becomes dimensionally consistent as well. Okay. So, this is a very important recursion relation of Hermite polynomials which obviously also relate the vibrational wave functions. And this is uh, very handy in deriving the selection rule for spectroscopic transition for a harmonic oscillator. Well, the selection rule as many of us might know for harmonic oscillator is delta v equal to plus minus 1. Uh, you can only jump one step at a time. How that comes? We will not dwell into it further. Whoever is interested can see uh, this uh, recorded module and perhaps the module after this which is available on YouTube. This is from our NPTEL course on molecular spectroscopy uh, from last semester. Right. Now we can conclude our discussion on quantum harmonic oscillator. Uh, we have not really done everything. There are certain things that are left but we are going to give some of it as a tutorial problem to you, uh, assignment problem to you. But let us summarize what we have learned. First thing we have learned is that. Uh, when we use uh, quantum mechanics very naturally vibrational energy of a harmonic oscillator turns out to be quantized. The quantum numbers range from 0 to in principle infinity and the energy of the vth level turns out to be v plus half multiplied by h cross omega which uh, leads to a corollary that a harmonic oscillator can never be at rest. Its uh, vibration energy can never be exactly equal to 0. Because as we said several times already but let me remind you once again because if it comes to rest then it means that position is the mean position so x equal to 0 plus minus 0 and momentum is also 0 plus minus 0. 
uncertainty in position, uncertainty in momentum both are equal to 0. So, uncertainty principle is violated, uncertainty principle cannot be violated, right. So, it makes sense that a quantum harmonic oscillator can never be at, zero, at rest. Even at 0 Kelvin, the uh, 0 point energy half h cross omega is there. And in fact, once again, perhaps we will give it to you as a uh, an assignment. At room temperature for most, harm, most uh, molecular uh, harmonic oscillators, it is the uh, V equal to 0 level that is only occupied. V equal to 1 level is usually not occupied at room temperature because the energy gap is too large. If you use uh, the uh, simple distribution, then Boltzmann distribution you will see that uh, for an energy gap of 1000 centimeter inverse, only 8 molecules would reside in V equal to 1 level for 1000 molecules in V equal to 0 level. So, practically at room temperature even V equal to 1 is not occupied forget about V equal to 2 and 3 and so forth. Okay. So, uh, 0 point energy is an uh, a fundamentally important concept for quantum harmonic oscillators. Then we have worked out the general expression for wave functions and it is beautiful, it is beautiful because it is a product of a constant, a Hermite polynomial and a Gaussian function. The Gaussian factor ensures that no matter how high is i you can go to the wave function falls off to 0 not too much beyond the potential energy surface. Why it can even go beyond the potential energy surface remember is your homework problem you ought to figure it out right. And the Hermite polynomials if you remember are uh, for v equal to 0 it is just 1 for v equal to 1 it is a first order polynomial. So, first order polynomial means what uh, is something like xi. So, for xi equal to 0 where is xi equal to 0 for x equal to 0 midpoint then what will happen you will get a node the wave function will change sign. If you go to uh, v equal to 2 that is a second order polynomial in xi. So, equate that to 0 you will get 2 roots and these are the 2 roots where the wave function will become not only become 0, but change sign. Please remember a node is a point or later on a plane or surface or something where wave function changes sign. It goes through 0, but it has to change sign. For example, if you go here at uh, x equal to infinity or xi equal to infinity, there also the wave function is equal to 0. But xi equal to infinity or x equal to infinity is not a nodal point because the wave function becomes 0 asymptotically it does not change sign. So, as you go higher up the energy ladder you get more and more and more nodes that leads to this uh, rule of thumb that more the number of nodes higher is the energy associated with the wave function okay. and the nodes here come from the Hermite polynomial being equated to 0 okay. whatever is the order of the polynomial will be equal to the number of nodes okay. that is why we get more and more nodes as we go higher up. Then we have learned that uh, recursion relation is there among uh, connecting these wave functions. So, just multiply a wave function by xi you will be able to get a linear combination of the wave function before and wave function after. So, uh, that is all for a simple harmonic oscillator. This as we said earlier has very uh, profound application in vibrational spectroscopy. Next we move on to a rigid rotor which also has a profound application in vibrational spectroscopy sorry rotational spectroscopy, but uh, also uh, one more reason why we study it is that the develop uh, the uh, methods that we develop there are going to come handy when uh, we talk about the first molecule 
hydrogen sorry the first atom hydrogen atom. Remember this course is on quantum chemistry of atoms and molecules. We have already learned the quantum chemistry of vibrating molecules. Now we learn the quantum chemistry of rotating molecules and that will enable us uh, to get into a hydrogen atom in which Schrodinger equation is exactly solvable. Okay. That is what we will uh, take up in the next few modules.